Before we begin, I want to clear my shelf here. I'm not really going to delete that shelf, but I'm going to come here to this little gear icon and create a new shelf, call this column video. And any tools I use during this video, I'm going to add to this shelf here. To add items to the shelf, you can go to any of the menu items and instead of just clicking on the tool, hold Control and Shift and then click on any of these tools to add it to the shelf. So now we can come back here and we can see that it creates a cylinder. If we need to choose specific settings every time in our tool, we can come here and instead of clicking on the tool itself, we can control shift click the option box. And now the option box will appear when I click on the tool. To delete any item from your shelf, you can right click it and just click delete. The first tool I'm going to need is actually going to be that create cylinder button. So let me add it again and create a base cylinder. And then I'm going to go to my channel box here on the right hand side. And if you don't see that, you can come up to here, Windows, General Editor, I'm pretty sure. Yep, and Channel Box Layer Editor. But when we're inside here, we can see our inputs for the object we have selected. I'm going to click on that, which will open up another menu. And this will give me the same options that we had when we were creating our cylinder. But now I can do them in a live way so we can kind of see what we're doing. The column I'm going to be creating is based off of the Parthenon. So I just know based off of old history classes, I'm wanting 20 sides for a dork style column. And each one of these sections is only going to be one height, but it's going to be about two and a half for the radius, or excuse me, two and a half for the diameter, so we want 1.25 for the radius. Those of you who are familiar with the Parthenon know that this is not in feet over here. This is just a ratio of the height to the radius of each one of these blocks. In reality for the Parthenon, each one of these blocks is about 1.7 meters in diameter. Luckily, we're doing this digitally, so these can end up any size we want. My next step, I'm going to hold right click on this and go to face mode and select all of it. And then I'm going to go to an angle where I can deselect the side here. So I only have the top and bottom selected. Then I'm going to push delete and remove those faces. That mode menu under the hold right click is context aware, so it knows what you're holding it over. So it will only give you things that are relevant to the object you're right clicking over which means you'll get some things in different places, but it also is aware of selection. So just something to keep in mind if you're wanting to get to a menu and it doesn't seem like you're seeing the right menu, make sure you have the right selection and you're not right clicking over another object that you're not wanting to see data on. To navigate your viewport, there are three quick gestures to learn. All of them kind of center around the Alt button on your keyboard. If you're holding Alt and left mouse, this will let you orbit around your object. If you're holding Alt and middle mouse, this will let you pan your view. And Alt and right mouse button, finally, will let you zoom in and out. One thing that can happen is if you have multiple objects, let me just create one, move it somewhere. You can get to a point where your focus is around something else. So when we're wanting to work on our object over there, we're not quite able to see it, even though it feels like we should be able to. And that's just where the camera is focused. You select the object you want, push F, and now you'll orbit around that object. It's just a little quirk of this navigation system. Next, I'm going to add another tool to my shelf quickly, and underneath Edit Mesh, we have Extrude. Control Shift, click that. And I'm going to select Faces mode again, select all of the faces, and then push Extrude. This will give us some options here, and the key one that I want to turn off is the Keep Faces Together for this. 
I want to have a little bit of thickness. Let's control that a little more. I'll make it half that. Then we need to choose an offset. And similarly, this isn't going to be a very large value. Well, that seems to work there. Let's see, I don't need any divisions there. And I'm going to have to clean up the top edge here and then bevel the edges. But I think that's looking pretty good there. Similarly with my other selection, yeah, select it all, make sure I just have these edges. And I'm going to delete it so I just have to worry about those. I'm going to push spacebar, which will let me change views here to my other cameras. And go to vertex mode, select these vertices, push W to get to the move widget. I'm going to click that arrow, kind of lock myself to that axis, hold the V button on my keyboard, and then middle mouse drag over one of these verts that I want to use as my location. And right now, it looks like I'm getting a little bit of movement. You can see the lines are yellow, which makes me think I'm in smooth move mode. So yeah, it was in a smooth modifier mode that was trying to drag the entire object. Now I can just move these vertices alone. So I'll try to do that again, have everything selected, hold V and middle mouse drag over where I want those. I can do the same thing quickly to the ones down here. And now I have this kind of shape and we can look at this and push three on our keyboard to smooth it. And you can see we're getting pretty close to the shape we're wanting. Now we're just needing to close off that top and bottom. To fill these holes, we're going to add another quick tool. But first, I'm going to click on my object and push the one button, get back to my low poly tool. It's just the way I like looking at the object and then go to mesh and then control shift and add our fill hole to our shelf so you can see it and then click fill hole. And as you see, it filled our top and bottom, though it still has a little bit of work to do because if we smooth it right here, we're gonna get a rough shape. For the top, I'm going to do this basically manually. I'm gonna select the face here and then extrude it then I'm going to set my offset and let's just set this to something small. And that worked pretty well there. Do the same thing with this one. And those are looking pretty good. The next thing I want to do is add another tool, which will be insert edge loop. Insert edge loop can be found under mesh tools. Control shift click that and add it here. But before I actually use the tool, I want to use that three button again and show you what that extrude we did really gave us. So now we have this object holding a bit more of its shape. But as you can see, it's holding it pretty well on the top now, but it's not really holding it as well on these sides it's really kind of bowing at the top and bottom. And while the Parthenon is famous for having little bowed shapes here and there, we really want to be able to control that later. So let's go back to our one and go use our insert edge loop tool that we just added. So you click on it and then select an edge. You can see you can slide that edge if you hold your left mouse button down. And I'm going to slide it up pretty close to the top and then have one pretty close to the bottom. And now we should have a reinforcement edge loop around the top to keep that flatness there. Well, I guess top and bottom. And then we should have one here on the top and bottom to really hold that straight edge when you see the side of this. And to verify that, let's click it, push three. And you can see we're getting pretty good Doric looking blocks now. To finish up this block, I'm going to use two more tools, edit 
delete by type history and modify freeze transformations. Delete history will remove any of the history or live tools from this object so we don't have any problems with that later. And freeze transformations will take these things on the right and make them what they call identity, which is back to zero for translation, which is the movement of the object, rotation, and scale. Though what I want to do is actually move this up, and that was almost spot on, to 0.5 since this is a unit size block. Then we can duplicate this easier for the rest of our blocks in the pillar. Though as you can see now, this is where we want to be the identity for our block, but it has that 0.5 value. We can use that freeze transformations, and now this will be zeroed out back at that location whenever we want. We can duplicate this block as many times as we want by clicking on it and using Control and D on our keyboard. Then we can move it up to the space we want. And in this case, it's actually pretty easy because we made everything in a unit size. So we can just add a value of one there and get our next block. And we could keep doing this for each block going up the chain. Though I also want to have an opportunity to show you Duplicate Special, so I'm going to do that now. Duplicate and Duplicate Special are under Edit, and then right here under a Duplicate subheading, and we're going to go into Duplicate Special's options. So let's add that, and it looks like I created it twice, so delete the first one. And then we can look in here. The first thing we want to see is if we want a copy or an instance. I'm not really going to go into instances quite yet, but we want to actually copy our geometry here. And then for each one of these duplicates, how do we want to move it? And in this case, we want to go in the Y direction 1. So we can just put 1 here. And then we have everything that we're needing aside from the number of copies. There are 12 layers of bricks. So I'm going to create 11 copies since we already have one, and then duplicate special. I have to select the object first, good thinking, now duplicate special. And as you can see, we have our big tower of blocks. To clean up my scene a little bit, I should probably name these. So I could either come here and double click the name over here and give them a name manually, or I can select all of these by clicking on the first one, holding shift and clicking on the last one, and then come over here, hold down left mouse button and go to rename on that square icon there, and then give this a name. So this can be Parthenon Column Brick, and even if it's a long name, it can go in and it will actually have all of the names sorted out for us. As you see, it put in numbering but didn't number the first one because that's going to be its default. If we want to fix that, I can go up here to my name again and put 01. And now it will actually start with 01, though it had history for all of my other blocks. So let's actually see. Can I just put a 1 here and will it do this? logically. No, it's not going to. But as you can see, that would be the other way to name it. Right now it's not happy with these. So if I change this from brick to block, since there won't be a history of these other names here, it'll let us actually create these. So column block one, now we have one through twelve. If we want to delete our history so we don't run into that naming issue, if we use old names again, we can delete our history on all the objects that have used those names. The next piece to add is really two pieces on this, and it's the capital. So I'm going to push spacebar again and go to my side view, and I'm going to need two different shapes for this capital. One is going to be a cylinder, which we already have here. And the other one's going to be a cube, which I'll add to the shelf now, and create a simple cube. I know it needs to be 
2.5 in each direction, I'm pretty sure. Yep. And then I need to change the height. I know the height of this is actually on this block. The capital is all part of this block, and really on the Parthenon, it's a pretty small capital. But one of the things that makes this a little deceptive, and I think it would even be less than 0.5, I want to say it's like 0.3 of it. But we'll get back to this in a second. Because this piece here then has another part that comes down and it takes basically a third of it. I'll see if I can find a good picture of it to really show how this capital comes down. But you can see this last line between these two sections. I will create a cylinder to make the next part. Same thing, radius 1.25, make its height 0.3, and this one will be a little interesting to look at because we won't be able to really see it yet. Because if you notice one thing, and this is another one of those, if you're familiar with the building, you'd probably notice that these columns are really straight. They don't have that taper, which makes them oddly look straighter when you're standing there next to the building. And we're going to add that in a bit. But these top pieces really play into that because we get a few of these where this diameter here is kind of the same as the pillar when in all actuality the pillar tapers by this point so it doesn't look the same when you get here. So let's try to average these two out a little bit more and get this shape going for us. I actually feel like that would be a little lower. And yeah, I am kind of eyeballing these, though I have done this model and have seen these reference pictures quite a few times at this point in my life. Joys of studying art history and really being a fan of Greek and Roman eras. So there we go, we have those two pieces kind of stubbed in place. Now we kind of need to smooth them out and shape them into our capital. I think before I can finish shaping out this capital here, I need to get some of the shape to this pillar. So to do this, I'm going to select these and then use Control G to put these into a group. And I'm just going to call these main blocks for now. I just need to really give it a name. It doesn't really matter what per se. But now I can select this and go from modeling to animation and then deform. And then I want to use lattice here. So I'm going to control shift it so it'll be here on my tools and create a lattice. And as you see, this creates a very simple shell around our object. But the cool thing about this shell here, and let's see, I will figure out how much control do I need for this shape. You know, this might actually be pretty good here. So the interesting thing about this shape is that it tapers a little bit, not much, just a tiny bit near the top and bottom. So we can kind of get that shape going. And then similarly, we're doing this to the top. And it does it a little more aggressively at the top, but not much. It really just plays into that natural perspective they're adding. 
Though the cool part about that natural perspective they add with that, actually, I do need to make these a little smaller. Because the place I'm trying to target them coming together is that inner cylinder we were just playing with. So maybe not quite that aggressive. But this is the part where it takes a little exploration. And also one of the things that makes this building as unique as it is, they had to really come in and design these pillars one at a time. And beyond one at a time, they really had to make them unique in ways that you really don't see in much architecture. Every single one of these bricks has very slight deviations from the form, which means that each block might be different by only a few millimeters, which has actually made the reconstruction effort really hard because they've had to go in and manually figure out which pieces go where. So now that we have a bit of that shape in there, we can come in and shape the rest of our capital. So let's have that come in, and it is basically a straight angle into here, though there is a little bit of a lip there. So we'll make sure we have that lip, including a little room for our bevel. So we have that in there, that's looking pretty good. I am honestly feeling this top piece needs a little more thickness. And I know at that point I'm being a little nitpicky, but as a recreation, sometimes that's part of the job description. In this case, not necessarily, because I'm just kind of having fun. So here's something where I want the top of this object to be exactly on that line. The way I can do that is if I hold D, this will let me move the control point on this object. And if I click on that top arrow to lock that access, then I can, while I'm still holding D, also hold V and then middle mouse drag a vertex where I'm wanting to snap to. And I'm snapping to one over here, but since I've locked to the vertical axis, the Y axis, it's only going to change the Y axis and not the X axis as well. I know that was kind of confusing. I'll have that on the screen because basically you're holding three things at least, maybe more. I'll correct myself in there in a bit. But it's also one of those you never really think about once you learn it it becomes almost a muscle memory thing. Uh, so now that I have the pivot point where I want, I can hold the X button and a middle mouse over that line, not a vertex line, but a grid line. And now it'll snap exactly to that grid. So as you see, completely covers and gets rid of that part there. So now I can select the edges here. I want to select all of these edges. As you can see, sometimes this will poke through a bit. Technically, they're on the exact same plane, so it doesn't know which one to render. Uh, I'm going to go back to modeling. So it will sometimes flicker between them. It should be good, but we can fix that in just a bit. So I want to go to bevel this time. And this time, I'm actually going to bevel. So here, there is. Oops, under edit mesh bevel, which is control B, I'll add it to my shelf. And if I bevel with all the edges selected, you can see gives me a little bit of rounding, though that's way too much for what I am needing. And we can simplify that a little bit. 0 0.05 has been treating this model pretty well. That's looking good. I might actually add another division to this and what that'll do or segments as they call it here will make sure that edge is a little more reinforced but essentially I want it to have that very square edge but nothing in nature really has a true 90 degree angle a 90 degree angle will cut you with blocks of marble 
So it's just something to keep in mind that everything has some natural rounding to it and it will add some realism to your models when you're working. Similarly, I'm going to select this one here. And this time I'm going to go by edge loop and select the edge loops I want. And I'm going to remember, or actually it's a cylinder, so it doesn't go all the way through. If this was a donut shape, I would also have to select the edges on the back to reinforce it so we don't have the model drifting off form here. But since I made it a cylinder, that'll totally work as is. Bevel this. Same thing, I'm going to make this fraction pretty low and give it a second segment. Let's make that 0 0.05. And I think we're pretty good on that. Let's see. We smooth that, getting a pretty good shape. And it has a little bit of overhang here, and that seems to be just enough to really close that shape. I might actually make this a little bigger, just so we have a little more overhang there, but we're looking pretty good. Or actually, instead of making it bigger, I'm gonna do it the other way around make my lattice point slightly smaller. That should give me enough of that lip. Yep, that should be good. So now our column's getting pretty close to done, though there's a few more details on the pillar to really make it the Parthenon pillar. We have some details here on the capital, and then there's actually one quick base detail, and then we're done. To add the finishing touches to our capital, I'm gonna click and hit F to make it easier to navigate. We're gonna be using our insert edge loop tool we were using. And I'm going to set a mark about there. And what this is, I will add two more and make sure I have two pretty even sized bands here, is I'm going to extrude these edge loops. So if I go to face, I can click one face, and while holding shift, double click the face next to it, and I'll get all of those faces. And I should be able to hopefully click here and then shift click the one next to it and get all of those faces and then click extrude. And we want a very small thickness for these. So let's do a 0 0.05. Whoop, that's way too thick. 0 0.01, 0 0.001. And that's looking pretty good. Yes. And then let's extrude this again and do a 0 0.003. So now when we smooth this, we'll get two rings right there. And we're going to duplicate this for a smaller set of rings on the inside of this. And I've seen a lot of different variants on how many rings there are. I'm going to go with three, but the details are a little rough. Um, I'm sure they've done extensive work on the recreation to really nail down how many there are. But it's something that I've seen drawn so many different ways that I don't think anyone's going to complain if it is one way or another. Okay, so similarly, I'm going to come in here and select my faces. And then do my smaller extrude. And this one, I'm just going to do that first point zero zero one. So now we get 
two big lines and some softer lines underneath it. And really when it comes to the Parthenon's main pillars, that is the highest level of detail that I've really seen on them. But there is one other detail we're going to add here on the bottom. And it's not something you can see on any of the pillars, but let's see, 1.3. It's something that you can see on some of the ones that have been ripped from the ground or taken from the ground. And it's just enough to cover this lip, what you would imagine seeing that going the other direction. But these actually continue into the ground a little bit. So I'm going to select this and really it doesn't matter how much, eh, that actually might be good. Give artists some space to kind of sink it into the ground a little bit. And then we can take one of these and I'm going to duplicate that and then take it outside of the group. Let's see, will it take its deformations with it? So what I want to do here is it has a little lip that goes the other direction. And it really isn't much. But it's just enough before this turns into a straight down pillar, which is what the base is built around. And there we go, we have our modular pillar that we can put into things. Uh, I can select this and just like everything in, else in life, bevel its edges slightly. Said so slightly. To give it a little more naturalistic view. I'm going to come in here and name a few things, though here I'm also going to just combine and then this will be capital. And you know what, I'll just select everything. Delete by type history, freeze transformations. We have our capital up there, including block 12. That becomes part of our capital. And this is just the, you know, janitorial work of modeling, not dissing janitorial work or cleaning up your models. Both are very important, but it's just something that you always have to keep in mind while working on things. Let's see, that's down there. Really, most of that geometry is hidden. That'll be good. Mesh. Combine. Let's see. That is nothing, right? Sweet. So we have everything. I can put this in one more group with Control G. Then we can just do Parthenon pillar or should use column official name and all o1 and parthenon looks good now i have my column i can save my scene and call it good this concludes our quick tutorial on modeling a column from the parthenon I hope you learned something. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, any of the social media funness. And if you really feel inclined, please consider donating to the labs. Uh, we try to teach people art and technology, as well as make open source technology more accessible and available to our community. Thank you. Have a good day. Peace.